Hello. Chapter 6, Section 1. One of those important things you'll learn in your life, nay, the world, nay, this course. Alright? I already taught this once, and just so you know, I did awesome, and my shirt was so cool. But, my camera hard drive crashed, and I lost it, so I'm redoing it. So, congratulations, let's get started, okay? <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Bin Laden. Alright, now, we'll do Section 6-1. Properties and attributes of polygons, which means essentially we're just talking about polygons. Okay, you might have heard this word before, you might not have. Uh, I might not even know if not of is a word. People are strange. All right, polygons means it has three or more sides that are all connected by straight lines. Okay, that's not the official term, but guess what? I get to say whatever I want because I'm in front of the board and I have a marker. All right, so let's talk about some. Terms you need to know. Let's say this is a polygon. All those are straight lines. It's all connected. It's a polygon. Okay. So first thing you know, this angle part where those two sides meet is called a vertex. Okay. Vertex. Now these are called the sides. So it's called the side of the polygon. All right. Next thing. When you go from one angle to the other angle across the polygon, or from just any, actually from any vertex to another vertex, it is called the diagonal, okay? Diagonal, you usually think of like this. Sometimes it goes straight down, depends on how those vertexes are situated, okay? That's a diagonal, that's a diagonal, that's a diagonal. Anywhere you can go across this sucker, look, it's a pretty sideways star. Ah. All right, now, so that's a diagonal. Those are all diagonals, all right? Now, I could go from this vertex to this vertex, right? But what I'm going to be doing is just going to be kicking it down that side of the polygon. So therefore, it's not a diagonal because it turns into a side. All right, make sense? Cool. The vertexes or the vertices are where all this stuff rolls from. What does that mean? I don't know. All right, now, what I'm about to give you, you need to write down, okay? If you, I go too fast or whatever, you can always pause and look back at it or rewind it, whatever you got to do. Work, 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 spin it backwards, all right? Now, I said it has to be three or more sides, okay? Well, let's start with the smallest then. Three sides is a triangle, okay? You've probably heard of this before. Triangle, all right? Can you see that? Yes. All right, four sides. It's called a quadrilateral, quadrilateral. All right, did I spell that right? Yes, all day, every day. We're going to talk a lot about quadrilaterals. Triangle and quadrilaterals are the main ones. They're like bread and butter. All right. Five is pentagon, named after the American Congress system. Pentagon. Six is hexagon. The way I remember hexagon, six has an X in it. Hex has an X in it. Okay. It's only two to do. All right. Seven is heptagon. All right. Somebody else called this, uh, some books call it something different than heptagon. I don't remember what it is. It's something stupid. Mine's better. The way you remember it is, somebody put a hex on you, and you fell down the stairs, and they hipped you back up. You get it? From Gaudium Leviosa. <laughs> All right, now, number eight is octagon. All right, octagon, do you remember that? Because um, octopus, or Dr. Oc from Spider-Man 2, you know he had those four metal things that came out of his back? He had four of those, and then he had two arms and two legs, which makes eight limbs. Therefore, they called him Dr. Oc. All right, nine is non a gone. All right, and I'm not doing this lesson outside, but it sounds like there's 80 crickets in the dang ceiling. All right, <laughs> not like I live in Arkansas or anything. All right, nine is not a gone. It sounds like nine a gone. That's how you remember that one. Ten is decagon. All right, which the prefix is dec, which is like decade is ten years. Cool. Eleven, we're gonna skip. Twelve is a do decagon. All right. Now you remember that because the decagon is ten, dose is two, dose plus decagon is twelve. So there you go. And you're thinking right now, you're like, Mr. Tarver, you skip number eleven. Well, that's because we don't have a special name for number eleven. We call this <coughs> an end. Okay, crap. Anything eleven and then up and all that, that's called an endagon. Okay. All right. So that means that like if it's fifteen, you call it a fifteen gon. 11, you call it 11 gone. It's 1,021, you call it 1,021 gone. 
All right, you just stick gone behind whatever it is. These are the only ones with special names. Except this little gem I'm about to show you. 13-sided figure. Guess what? Did you read it? Can you read it? It says Tarvagon. Okay? That's the new shape we're bringing to the table. All right? Tarvagon. That's a 13-sided figure. All day, every day. All right? It's not official yet, so if it's like an ACT or something, don't, don't, don't put that down. But if it's like a class test or something that's not going to determine whether or not you pass, yeah, it's the official one. Tarvagon. All right? 13-sided figure because 13 is my favorite number. And plus, I'm a math teacher, okay? It's not official yet, but we're just slowly integrating it into the math community, all right? They're going to love it. They're going to catch on, okay? So let's put a big heart around that and leave that on here as long as we can because you are going to love it, like Justin Bieber. All right, now, those are all the terms you need to know. Now let's look at polygons, okay? Whew. Girl, I've been talking, and I feel like I ain't been breathing, all right? Open a window. Somebody is on fire. All right? Now, I'm going to leave that up there just so you'll subtly go into your brain and you'll never forget it. All right? Now, you need to know what a polygon is, okay? I mentioned earlier polygons got three or more sides. And they're all connected, blah, blah, blah. Now, here's a hint. This right here is a polygon. All right, let's just draw a few and then I'll let you guess, okay? This one is going to be easy guess because I just said the answer. Alright? Boom, you forgot. Alright, here we go. Uh, what's another good one? I'll do this one. Okay, we got four of them here. We're going to say whether or not they're polygons. First one, we've got all straight lines connecting, we got sides, we got vertexes. Mamma mia, that works. All right, it's all closed in. Here, we got two lines, and this little sucker is curved. That seems like, yeah, it don't work. It doesn't work. Get out of here, mister. You ain't no polygon. Not in my house. All right, this one right here. Are all, it's got straight lines. It's no curvies. But it is not connected. Therefore, not a polygon. Has to be connected all the way around, okay? Like if there was water in there, it couldn't get out, okay? This little guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's an octagon. And it also looks a lot like the ship that Luke Skywalker flew in the Death Star, blow it up. You don't know that, you're a dork. That works. Okay, so that's a polygon. That's a polygon. Mm -hmm. All right, now, next term you need to know. It's called regular, okay? They call it a regular polygon because that means it is perfect. They should have called it a perfect polygon, but then you'd have an initial at PP, and then everybody had to go to the bathroom. All right, so we're going to call it a regular polygon. Okay? A regular polygon. That means all of the sides and angles are congruent to each other. All those angles are going to be the exact same measure. All those sides are going to be the exact same measure. Okay? Regular polygon means it's perfect. You're going to deal with these a lot, especially when you're going to find those angle measures and stuff, okay? So now when they say regular, they mean it's perfect. All the angles are the same, all the side lengths are the same, okay? That's regular. I hope you remember that term, because if not, you're going to fail everything. I'm just kidding. That's an exaggeration, but it's good to know. Okay? All right. Next two terms. We got concave and convex. Concave is a polygon that is caved in. See how that's caved in? Convex is one that is not caved in, okay? It's just straight up not caved in, okay? Now, the official way to find out if it's concave or convex is by the diagonals. If you can run a diagonal from one vertex to the other and it is outside of the polygon, therefore it is concave. Okay? Like if I run this one right here, that diagonal, it's still inside. We're good. But when I do that diagonal, it's outside in the exterior. It's in no man's land. So therefore it's concave. 
Convex, if I do all the diagonals here, they're all inside, therefore it's convex. All right, now, boom, they're kind of close together, so it's hard to remember which one's which. The best way I've told to do it is concave is easy to remember because it's caved in. If it's not convex, concave, it's convex. Let me say that again without stuttering like an idiot. All right, concave is caved in, convex is the other one, okay? Now, all regular polygons have to be convex, just so you know, for fun. That's a fun fact. Kind of like that uh, Will Smith actually turned down the role of being Neo in the Matrix. So Keanu Reeves took it over because he wanted to do Wild Wild West, which we all know was a blockbuster hit. And when to give us a song. So, here we go. What do you need to know? Need to know basis? You need to know this right here. N minus 2 times 180, okay? N minus 2 times 180. This is the formula. It's on your reference sheet. It's on, it'll be on your end of course exam. You'll have it, okay? This formula lets you find what all the angles inside of a polygon add up to equal, okay? All of the angles inside of a polygon <laughs> add up to equal whatever that it goes into this formula for, okay? For instance, Say you have a tarvagon, a 13-sided figure, okay? <coughs> N is the amount of sides, okay? Say so we've got like, like this drawing on the back. See that? It's tarvagon, okay? <laughs> Say we've got 13 sides. So I can't count. Say there's 13 sides here. I want to know what all these angles inside here are going to add up to equal. I plug it in. 13 minus 2 times 180. Now, if you type in your calculator, 13 minus 2 parentheses 180, it's going to give you the wrong answer because it's going to multiply first. It's going to do order of operations. Do the minus 2 part in your head. 13 minus 2 is 11 times 180 is going to be 1,980, I believe. Is that correct? Sure, why not? Okay, so that's it. That means that all the angles inside of a 13-sided figure, no matter how it's shaped like that, is 1,980, okay? The end. All right, let's do an easier one. Um, let's do just a triangle. We all know triangles add up to 180 degrees. That's not a triangle. I don't know what I was just doing just there. Okay, let's try it. Triangle has three sides. Three minus two is one. One times 180 is 180. So that would work, okay? It works. It works. It's called the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. Okay? It's on your reference sheet. I'm still talking. Okay? Let's move on to the next one. See if I can say okay one more time. Okay? All right. Okay. Now, here we go. Here's a form. Here's something you'll have to work a lot. Let's say you have a, a regular hexagon. Let's pretend like all these angles are the same. All these sides are the same. And we want to know what one of those interior angles is, okay? They'll say, the way they'll word the problem usually is, what is the measure of each interior angle of a regular hexagon? Each means one by itself, interior, inside, angle of a regular, means all of them are the same, hexagon, which means it has six sides. You do this formula, six minus two times 180, six minus two is four, so you would do four times 180, which equals 720. So 720, that's what all the angles inside there add up to equals, 720. That's whenever I put that, 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 all those together, 720. I want one of those. If they're all split equally, all I have to do is divide that by however many angles there are. There are six. So I'll divide it, it will be one, Something? What is that? 120? Is that right? If it's wrong, then I'm not a math teacher. You're a math teacher. Yes, it worked. All right? 120 degrees. That means every single one of those angles in there are 120 degrees. Okay? If it's regular, obviously, because they're all the same. So, there you go. All right? Find each interior angle, that's what you do. Um, that's what, or, yeah. So we know how to find out what all angles inside there add up to equal. 
we know how to find what one of them, if it was a regular, is. Okay? Now, next thing you need to know. In any polygon, okay, you know, with uh, finding the, in, the sum of the interior measures, like that formula, n minus 2 times 180, the more angles you have, the bigger that number gets, correct? Okay, that thing can get up to as, as high as you want to go with the amount of angles, all right? Now, the exterior angles, that's the angles on the outside of a polygon. You have to make that noise. These angles right here, those exterior angles, they always add up to 360 degrees. I don't care if it's a triangle, a pentagon, a tarbagon, a 15 agon, a 30 agon, a thousand agon, an 18 billion agon. Those exterior angles add up to 360 degrees. I know. All right. The reason is if you snapped all those angles off and stuck them together in a big pile, it's going to make a circle. Okay? And a circle is 360 degrees. They always add up to 360 degrees. Okay? So, you're going to see problems like this. If, say, this is like 2x, x, 3x, 4x, and 2x, what you would do is, to find out what x is, you just add all these up and set them equal to 360. 2x plus x is 3x, 6x, 10x, 12x. So 12x equals that, x equals 30. Okay? And then you would just plug it in, you could find whatever angle you wanted to find. Okay? That's one way you'll see that problem. All right. Also, what you'll see is the question will ask, um, what is the measure of, of each exterior angle in a regular anything? Okay, let's say we got a regular nonagon, which means all the sides are equal and it's got nine sides. Okay, so it's a nine sides, which means there's nine angles inside and there's also nine angles on the outside. What do we know that the exterior angles always add up to equal? 360. To find one of those angles, I divide it by 9, I get 40. Okay? If that's not right, then you're wrong. Okay? That's not 40. Yes, it is. It's 40. I'm just kidding. Okay? So 40 degrees. That's what one of the exterior angles equals. Now, remember earlier whenever I was like, if the problem asks what is the measure of each interior angle of a regular something, okay? What one of those angles in there if they're all equal? There's another way to find it as opposed to going n minus 2 times 180, getting a big number, and then dividing it by how many angles there are. If you want, you can do this. Say it's a, uh, let's well, say it's a pentagon, five-sided figure. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And we want to know what this angle in here is. We can find the exterior angle and then subtract it from 180 because, look, those are going to make a straight line. So, if we want, instead of going, uh, let's just start it this way with the 361. I know there's 360 degrees on the outside, divided by 5, and you're going to get 72 degrees. That's 72 degrees. I can subtract that from 180, and I have my interior angle, just like that, okay? Or if you wanted, you could always go back to the n minus 2 times 180, plug in 5, 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 times 180 is uh, 540. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And then you could divide that by how many there are inside, and you get 108. Either way, you're going to get the answer. It's whichever way you want to get it. You can find the exterior angle first, subtract from 180, or you can plug it into the sum of the uh, interior angles of a um, polygon. Okay, I think it has to be a convex. Who cares? I'm not a math teacher. You're a math teacher. Is there anything else you need to learn? I don't think so. I left this up here the whole time because I want you to start using it in your classroom today. Thank you very much, and have a lovely day. And the end, I don't know where the...